this video is not going to make me any friends. YouTube is protecting abusers. Let me repeat that. YouTube is protecting abusers. And the reason I say that and a great example of that was yesterday's show. Now statistically, one out of three of you, maybe all the way up to one out of two of you are gonna be like, what video? And the reason for that is that for a lot of you, YouTube suppressed that video. Though, I mean, given the numbers, they didn't just suppress it, they smothered it. If YouTube had not intervened, that show would have normally gotten 900,000 to 1.2 million. Instead, uh, as of recording, it is just over 500,000 views. And the reason or reasons for that is yesterday I covered multiple stories. Uh, a young woman who made claims and allegations against one of YouTube's biggest stars, as well as uh, police body cam stories and, and some footage, though we were very selective in an attempt to not get suppressed by YouTube, uh, that left uh, one person dead at the hands of police, another harassed uh, attempts at holding those responsible accountable. And YouTube, in its infinite wisdom, decides this People, people shouldn't see this. And so they make it so where the video would normally populate for you or other people, it doesn't show up. To give you an example, the video prior to that, which was actually one of our worst performing videos of the last 10, is just under 1 million views, just under 7 million impressions, uh, an impression click-through rate of 11.3%, with the average impressions on a video that doesn't like super, super blow up being somewhere between 7 to 10 million. And then we compare that to yesterday's video, just over 500,000 views, an impression click-through rate of 22.5%. People were very interested in the contents of the video, but get ready for it, only 1.1 million impressions. Which is wild because I've been told by people at YouTube in the past that when I get suppressed, it just means that underage, non-subscribed people don't get my videos. But uh, that's a lie because according to YouTube's own analytics, the people that watch me under the age of 18 is under 1%. When you look at the number of impressions on a normal video compared to what happened yesterday, they, did, they didn't make it so that I was only going out to 99% of people, 90% of people, 80% of people. They cut my reach down to 10 to 15%. That is genuinely crazy. Meaning that if YouTube did not suppress and smother this video, they treated it like one of my worst performing videos in the last two weeks. It would have around 1.35 million views or just to even be con super conservative, a million plus. And understand that the reason that this is an issue is so disconnected from money. Whether that video got 200,000 views to million, 20 million views, I was getting paid the same. Right, we got so used to being demonetized, I built out a whole new business to make sure that every single show that I release, every single thing, has monetization on it through an in-show in sponsor. And for YouTube, if it was just demonetization, I get it. I don't want Adpocalypse 17.0 or whatever it would be at this point. YouTube, demonetize me, but don't stop my videos from getting out to people. Even disconnected from yesterday's story, because understand, I'm not trying to be the, the judge, jury, and executioner. I'm not legally saying what happened or didn't happen in any situation. But suppressing the flow of news coverage, suppressing the flow of information, isn't the answer. This isn't a you cracking down on misinformation story or situation. This is you looking at news coverage and going, that's too mature for everybody. But that's the world out there right now. That's how you scare people away from trying to keep those in power accountable. If people know you're going to kill their video and you're killing videos because they are talking about serious accusations, how can you hold people accountable? People are just not going to bring to light serious stories. YouTube, what you are doing here, it is stupid, it's dangerous, and it very much protects abusers. YouTube, I do not believe that you are nefarious, that you're like, let's protect abusers, but your stupid, broken policies are doing just that. And to those of you watching right now, I'm actually gonna ask for the same favor that I asked for yesterday. In addition to engaging with this video in all the ways that hopefully feed the algorithm gods, you know, liking, leaving comments about what we're actually talking about, maybe you're subscribing if you're new here. Please also share this video, one, so people know about the issue, and two, we make it undeniable for, for people at YouTube to be like, I didn't see that video or that claim. Because YouTube, you are creating a ridiculous and dangerous environment here. Part of the reason that YouTube is, or rather should be, amazing is that it's a tool to help hold those who historically have power and have not been held accountable, accountable. But also because I have doubts that YouTube will do the right or the smart thing here. Uh, if you follow me, you're in the United States or Canada, please text me at this number, 813-213-4423. In addition to a bunch of other exclusives and secret stuff, I text out the show every day so you don't have to worry about YouTube suppressing or not. And for international viewers outside of that, or I mean, even domestically, go to defrancodailydownload.com, sign up with your email, and every morning you'll get the, the news that I cover in the show, news that I did not cover, and you get 
the video just in case you missed it and that's how you prefer to get it. But that's where I'm going to leave it. I hate doing anything that, that feels like complaining, but this is, it's a much bigger issue. And yes, it affects me, but it also affects the entire landscape. But from that, let's take a second to pay some bills and thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Keeps. You know, two to three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time that they're 35. And everyone's got that someone in their life, right? That, that brother, that uncle or friend dealing with hair loss. And if you don't want to go down that road, you don't have to just wait for it to happen to you too. Keeps helps you stop hair loss before it's too late with their scientific and affordable approach to treatments that are up to 90% effective at reducing and stopping further hair loss. And Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products that are out there. So some of you may have actually already tried them before, but probably never at this price. Which, uh, by the way, fantastic. Fantastically, for a limited time, you beautiful bastards can get 50% off your order. All without having to go to the doctor's office for your prescription because with Keeps, they deliver the products directly to your home. It's that easy. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Franco or just click that link in the description down below to receive 50% off your first order. Then, and I'm not sure how to talk about this story without YouTube somehow using it as a technicality to suppress this video because of just criticism. Some of the news coming out of Minnesota and specifically Brooklyn Center is that the officer that is responsible for what happened to Dante Wright as well as the Brooklyn Center police chief have resigned. This coming today from Brooklyn Center Mayor Mike Elliott, who also called Minnesota Governor Tim Walz to turn over the case to Attorney General Keith Ellison, whose office is notably currently prosecuting former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. And if for any reason you don't understand what I'm referencing here or the update, uh, you can watch yesterday's show. But yeah, unfortunately, I just have to play everything super safe today. Then, in major business and money news, we should talk about crypto having a massive moment right now. Well, in part, this is obviously the continuing of a massive trend we've seen over this year. We have two major pieces of news. One is that today we saw Bitcoin hitting another New high, leaping above $63,500 for the first time this morning. And two, this surge is coming ahead of the cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase making its debut on the stock market tomorrow, where notably it is expected to go public with a $100 billion valuation. And for comparison here, that is more than the NASDAQ and Intercontinental Exchange, the owner of the New York Stock Exchange, combined. So because of that, we've seen some seriously questioning Coinbase's projected valuation. However, as some in the crypto sphere have argued, there's still a bit of distrust in the industry. And I think having a company of that size be public is going to help a lot of people realize that this is not just an asset class to take seriously, but also a business to take seriously. And, uh, you know, as far as my opinion, uh, tomorrow is going to be very interesting to watch. While I don't talk about it every day, I'm a big believer in the space. I've used Coinbase, I'm actually a Coinbase affiliate. I have invested in crypto companies like Lolly. And here's what I'll say. I think like that other person said, there is distrust and I think it is healthy to have distrust. But if you're someone who has seen crypto as like another thing, something that other people use, there's actually an easy way to get involved. One, if you wanna see what Coinbase is all about, you can go to coinbase defranco.com. That's an affiliate link. If you sign up that way, I benefit as well. But what I personally love is once you have an account, they even have this whole reward system where you learn about crypto and you can actually get $31 in crypto for free just by learning about it. And two, if you go to lollyfill.com, you sign up, you download the browser extension, boom, you can earn crypto on the purchases you're already making. Yeah, boom, you get crypto, you get skin in the game without changing anything you're doing, without spending money in a way that you weren't already doing it. Then, uh, next up, we should definitely talk about this morning, the CDC and the FDA recommending pausing the use of the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. You know, with this story, I'm gonna try to be very careful about how I say things, go and talk about specific details because I think misinformation and uh, headline reading with this story could prove to be very, dangerous. So what we know so far, uh, 6.8 million people in the United States have been vaccinated with the Johnson & Johnson single dose vaccine, most with no or only mild side effects. However, this updated guidance today comes after six women, all between the ages of 18 to 48, experienced with both agencies described as extremely rare blood clots six to 13 days after being vaccinated. And currently of those six out of 6.8 million, one woman has died and another is in critical condition. Though, to be clear here, at this time, neither the CDC nor the FDA has confirmed that the Johnson and Johnson vaccine is the definitive cause of the blood clots. Rather, they say that this guidance comes out of what they refer to as an abundance of caution. It's also in line with Johnson & Johnson itself, which has said that, quote, no clear causal relationship has been established between these rare events. Though, as a precaution, Johnson & Johnson has also now delayed the rollout of its vaccine in Europe. Now, as far as what happens from here, you have the FDA Acting Commissioner Janet Woodcock saying, we expect it to be a matter of days for this pause. You also have tomorrow a CDC committee convening to discuss the cases and assess their potential significance. With all this, we've 
also seen a lot of people saying the government and these organizations that they're overreacting. Right? With people saying things akin to why would you stop vaccinations because you have six cases out of nearly seven million, whereas uh, the thing that it's trying to treat has killed over half a million Americans. You also have people like Nate Silver tweeting, six cases out of seven million people, what a disaster. This is going to get people killed and it's going to create more vaccine hesitancy. These people don't understand cost benefit analysis. They keep making mistakes by orders of magnitude. Also, we've seen people arguing six people out of seven million getting blood clots is actually relatively small compared to a number of other things. But uh, the pushback against that is reportedly the CDC pulled its recommendation specifically because of the type of blood clots in these six situations. Reportedly, the type of blood clots in these six situations require different special treatment than, than someone else who would have blood clots. And so one of the reasons we've seen people arguing for this cause is so that the medical community can learn about this and know that this is a possibility, even if it is rare. But with all that said, in the meantime, both agencies are urging Johnson & Johnson vaccine recipients to contact their doctors if they experience any combination of severe headaches, abdominal pain, leg pain, or shortness of breath. And most importantly, for everyone who is not vaccinated yet, both agencies as well as other health officials are still urging you to get vaccinated with Moderna and Pfizer vaccines when available to you. If you had an appointment scheduled to get the J&J &J vaccine, you are not completely out of luck. For example, while yes, in DC, all Johnson & Johnson appointments between today and this Saturday have been canceled. You had the health department saying that tomorrow they'll send out invitations to reschedule. Though uh, there, you just need to check in, right? Some vaccination sites in Maryland are actually still honoring existing appointments and automatically giving people Pfizer instead. And then finally today, let's talk about the number of unaccompanied minors in US Customs and Border Protection custody. And this, because according to the most recent government data, that number has dropped by 45%. Right, so as we've talked about before, there's been this massive surge in migrant children at the Southern border ever since Joe Biden took office, and especially after he eased Trump-era restrictions requiring unaccompanied minors to wait in Mexico in often dangerous conditions for their court dates. But the, the result that we've seen with this situation is this influx of young children that the U.S. says they do not have the capacity to house, forcing the administration to call in FEMA, which of course is usually used for things like natural disasters, and here uh, as a way to hold thousands of kids in CBP detention centers. Right? And these centers are meant to be temporary holding cells, often described as jail-like and not meant for children. Right? And even then, unaccompanied minors are only supposed to stay there for 72 hours, but the vast majority stay longer, often in very crowded conditions with few COVID precautions. And at the end of last month, I mean, the, the numbers got crazy. We saw 19,000 children stop at the border, the, the most of any month on record. And there were 5,767 kids being held at these temporary facilities during the peak. But uh, what we're seeing with these recent numbers is a sharp drop, with the government reporting that as of Sunday, there were only 3,130 children in CBP custody. Still a lot, but a lot less. With there now being 18,027 children in health and human services custody, where they are in shelters rather than detention centers. But still, many of those shelters are still temporary and were just made to accommodate the influx of minors. And according to, to data and reports, there's also a, a monetary angle to that as well. With reports coming out saying that the daily cost per child is more than twice that of the department's already established shelter program at approximately $775 per day compared to around $290 per day. So as a result, the agency has urged the administration to develop more permanent facilities, hire more staff, among other things. And so this feels like a, an update to a story that is nowhere near the end. It can be positive news, but it's still a troubling situation. Right now, I mean, Biden's immigration issues have become a major flashpoint in the early days of his administration. And ultimately, with this story, or honestly, anything that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below, because this is the end of today's show. As always, thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, all of the good stuff. Definitely subscribe because uh, we're giving away cash, including $5,000 to a brand new subscriber for the month of April. But with that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow. YouTube suppression be damned. I'm still showing up.